Hi, it's David Liu reporting here from the Bella Centre in Copenhagen, July 2022. I want to just talk to you about uh, abstract, which I think is relevant for a lot of our daily practices, whether we like it or not, and it regards low-dose steroids in rheumatoid arthritis. Now, I think we, whether we like it or not, we've got a whole load of patients probably who are still on low-dose um, steroids, uh, especially maybe things have slipped during the pandemic. Uh, maybe people have self, self-regulated their own uh, prednisolone. Maybe they've come to you on low-dose prednisolone. Uh, maybe um, it's just something that happens. I think all of those things, all those situations happen in my practice, um, but we do have these patients who have been on prednisolone five milligrams a day for a year or two at least, um, despite the introduction of other DMRDs. Now, there's always a perception that it's hard to get rid of this and that adrenal insufficiency gets in the way of things. And so actually this is where data from the Gloria study, uh, which is overseen by Martin Bors, is actually really interesting in this context. Now, the Gloria study in itself is about uh, taking rheumatoid arthritis patients and adding on prednisolone five milligrams a day in the first place and seeing the benefit of that. Let's not debate the merits and otherwise of that today. And certainly that was another abstract that was presented today. But what I found really interesting was what happens at the end of the two years. Now, they had a look at these patients who were getting prednisolone 5 or placebo. So there's, we take out that um, we take out that psychological effect of being on the prednisolone and the dependence on it, which we know is a strong um, effect. And they weaned back on that therapy and look to see whether the patients developed symptoms of adrenal insufficiency, biochemical uh, evidence of adrenal insufficiency in the form of cortisol, ACTH, and they looked to see what happened between those two groups. And in fact, they couldn't see a difference between the two groups. So I think it's really reassuring that most patients, when you really try, if you can rip away that psychological component of coming off long-term low-dose steroids, actually can do it. But that needs you and I to hold their hand to encourage them through that quite difficult process. For plenty more on rheumatoid arthritis and the rest of rheumatology from July 2022, head on down to Room Now.